Would everyone please join me in welcoming Dr. Julia Neshwat back to Stetson. Wow, it's, it's great to be back. Greetings, everyone. I'm so honored and delighted to be here. And thanks to President Libby for having me and inviting me, and to the entire Stetson team uh, for, for making these arrangements. Um, but I'm, I'm thrilled again to, to be here and, and to talk to you, uh, kicking off the 2017-2018 uh, academic year. So today, I would love to really talk to you about all the wonderful and amazing um, things that I've experienced, um, you know, the family that you're about to join here at Stetson and the influence that this family has actually had on me and has taken me, um, and I think it can certainly have that same effect for you if you let it in. But every time I, I come back to the campus here, uh, I think about, I used to stay at Shadowan Hall, I see it's still here, <laughs> um, Student Union Building, uh, DuPont Paul Ball Library, I, I can't help but think back to the feeling of the sense of, okay, I'm a freshman, what, 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 what kind of promise will there be, uh, the excitement of it all. I remember asking myself back then, what will I become as a, as a person, both personally and professionally? Well, I stand before you today as the nation's leading diplomat for hostage cases worldwide, as a former State Department official for energy policy and as a proud Army veteran of both Afghanistan and Iraq. It all started with my family at home, who, as you heard, is, is here today, and really it caught fire with my Hatter family sitting around you. As incoming students, many of you are new to the Stetson University green and the green of these Florida surroundings. Some of you are picking up right where you left off a few months ago or last year, and some of you are making a new start in life and learning. Whatever your reason for being here at Stetson, welcome. Welcome to this new beginning, and welcome to this calling to come together as part of the Stetson University family for the first time. For my family, Stetson University has become really embedded, if anything, in our personal legacy kind of like a higher education DNA. As you heard earlier, I was the first from my clan to attend here, but far from the last. You know, my sisters, Jeanette, Jacqueline, and Dina, as well as my brother, Danny, uh, who couldn't make it today, um, all were called to embrace the, the uh, Hatter tradition and make Stetson their home. So some of them have traveled from New York and, and Tennessee to be here today. And as, as again, as you heard, I'm thrilled that my mom is here, Hyatt, who also took a class um, so again, this campus truly feels like home. In fact, um, at times thinking back, students would even com uh, confuse us because we very much looked alike um, from each other uh, several times when I was a freshman or sophomore. And when my mother would visit, would think that she was one of my sisters. So I, I think that's quite the testament of her looking years below her actual age. <laughs> my mother was my earliest inspiration. My father's death left her a widow with five young children to raise. However, she never saw that situation as a burden, but through her example had taught us all to do our best, to be our best, to never give up in the face of hardship, and to give back so lives of others would be changed for the better. Most of all, she told us to reach out to others regardless of their background, their race, or their religion. As Arab Christians in a rural small town in Florida in the early 1980s, we didn't always receive that kind of love back. But to my mother, that didn't matter. Even though she was a working full-time nurse, struggling to support a large family, she always emphasized in giving to others. And by giving, we would receive. So I can't help to think in today's toxic political and racial environment, I think her words couldn't ring more true. Every night, we would gather together on my mother's bed as a family. We would share the joys and tragedies of our day. And it was there that we learned to dream. Through the trajectory of our individual life journeys from that bed would propel us into philanthropy, pageantry, literature, law, medicine, government, 
and television broadcasting as each of my siblings' aspirations became realized. So Stetson poured fuel on that fire that was lit by my mother and has taken us farther than our dreams. My own vision would be service to our country, but I could never have imagined where that path would take me. Never in a million years while sitting here on campus as a freshman did I envision one day sitting across the table from the brilliant former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice or serving as a military intelligence officer in a combat zone, or living and studying for a doctorate in Japan, and su surviving an earthquake and tsunami and a nuclear meltdown, I might add. Uh, or teaching at the US Naval Postgraduate School. So the work that I pursue now began because of the mentorship of the educators that are sitting here around you today, who opened my mind and heart from these walls and broke through some walls of my own to give me the courage to embrace the world. Arriving at this beautiful campus, and yes, I was in that nerdy group. Uh, I, I worked part-time in the Stetson Library. Uh, I attended study halls. I participated in student government and many other organizations. But as I became acclimated to life at Stetson, what I could not realize was that I had my own unspoken needs. The loss of my father in high school still had left me with a sense of void and emptiness, searching for some sort of trusted guidance and leadership that could really illuminate and inspire my future. Our professors served as those lamps for me, and their light of inspiration has never extinguished. A number of these professors, uh, including, for example, Dr. Mich Mitchell Reddish, who was my religious studies professor, did far more than just expose my mind to the realm of diverse religions, ideologies, and culture. His passion and enthusiasm encapsulated the faiths and values of the world within the classroom walls every day and prompted my desires and heart to take flight to the international community. He even led our class to study abroad in Israel, Greece, Jordan, and Egypt. Bringing my own Jordanian heritage to his classroom, his effortless manner of making the interconnectedness of the family unit come alive, and not only inspired my passion to serve internationally while representing my country, but further deepened my own sense of family and culture. We are truly an interconnected family, whether on bare ground, in a refugee tent, or on this campus in a dormitory, or anywhere in this nation, where most basic needs are met. You know, every mother wants a safe bed for her children. Another key influence to me was Dr. T. Wayne Bailey, who sparked my passion for public service through a class trip to the Florida legislature. Seeing politics in action and personal causes and ideas for the common good transform from paper into actual practice remains a profound force for my work in establishing new offices at the executive levels of our government. I likely would have never been part of bringing new agencies and offices, offices in areas of national intelligence, energy diplomacy, or serving in my current post as the acting presidential envoy for hostage affairs. If not for Dr. Bailey's planting of seeds and serving the good for the local, the national, and the global community. Further, I am forever grateful for the wisdom imparted by Dr. Leonard Nance, who was my sociology professor and academic advisor. He provided a foundation of awareness and understanding of how societies and cultures are built and maintained. That foundation shapes daily decisions in my diplomatic work today. Some of the most profound experiences of your life here may have nothing to do with a classroom, but everything to do with finding a group or a network of friends who love and empower you just as you are. Another member of faculty, Sims Klein, I think at the time might have been uh, Stetson's head librarian. He steered me to just not that kind of comfort level, but trying to be an accepting cove on the Stetson campus. His invitation to be part of the Canterbury House Youth Group introduced me to an environment in which I could be myself and never feel judged or under any shadow of expectation. The fun spirit and openness from Sims and the bond shown within the youth group slowly stripped away my own shell of defenses. I even found the confidence to offer my first ever acoustic guitar performance and was still permitted to come back. 
Uh, music was not my forte, but that moment allowed me to be my unguarded self. And to this day, I think Sims is truly a rock star. So the professors who will power your dreams over the next four years have different names, but they stand here right beside you. They will be the ones who find potential that you never knew existed. They will see your unspoken needs and be around when you need to talk. No matter what their academic specialty, their foremost, foremost title is doctor of don't ever give up, provost of positive purpose, and dean of discovering your best authentic self. As I mentioned a moment ago, I had the honor of serving our country in the Army. That started actually here at Stetson with ROTC. Several instructors here had a lasting impact on my life, and that inspiration had continued to this day as I regularly deal with generals and admirals that are some of the most inspiring leaders in this country has ever known. About three years ago, Admiral William McRaven, who was the commander of our most elite special operations force when President Obama ordered the Navy SEAL raid that killed Osama bin Laden, shared his stirring wisdom at the University of Texas commencement. He encouraged every student to chase their dreams by starting every day with a positive act, to start every day with making your bed. Well, McRaven's words have now become a best-selling book, not surprisingly called Make Your Bed, and the Admiral's words have inspired a new generation. Similarly, I think to my journey, it actually began with my mother, encouraging me and my siblings to chase our dreams one step at a time by doing the simple, disciplined things in life to make our dreams a reality. So directly following my, my time at Stetson, I actually entered Stetson's Law School. Um, but by 9-11 uh, had actually happened, and it took a 180-degree turn, like so many others. So my Army unit was called up later to support operations in Afghanistan. And though I probably could have avoided the call up as a law student, I decided that I had to listen to my inner calling to serve my country. I deployed a few times, actually, as an Army captain in military intelligence during the early days of Afghanistan and later in the invasion of Iraq. And every day, I handled information that people had risked their lives to get to me, and I knew that lives depended on the accuracy and the speed with which I conveyed that information to our senior leaders in war. No mission was ever accomplished without an enormous coming together of trained personnel with outstanding credibility and extreme commitment to our nation. Conflict does create its own sense of camaraderie, its own brotherhood and sisterhood under worst of circumstances. Winston Churchill had only been prime minister for 16 days when the daring mission of the rescue at Dunkirk was proposed. The hope was to save about 30,000 at best. 300,000 were saved, but not in the 107 minutes like the movie that's showing in today's theaters. The life-saving and life-risking took days, and it all happened because strangers actually came together in arms. The people I served with in Iraq and the Coalition Provisional Authority, the people I met in those uncertain times, have helped my career path today. Let strangers you meet this day and on these grounds become friends for life. Our nation is divided along many political, social, and cultural chasms right now. Divisions cease to, sh to be sharp when people can be seen as individuals instead of political viewpoints. And we realize that we all dream of safety in our own homes and safety for the next generation. That dialogue can all begin in the hallways of dorm rooms and classrooms right here at Stetson. Again, thinking back about my own career path, one of the most important things in the Army that taught me, uh, first and foremost, was never dismiss the significance of the smallest tasks. Every one of us has to start from somewhere to bigger goals and more momentous life experiences than we ever realize. One thing that I share in common with Admiral McRaven and the President's new Chief of Staff, General John Kelly, is the experience of those monstrous, meticulous morning inspections. As Admiral McRaven vividly describes, the entire inspection process is designed to ensure that complete success is unattainable. It is crafted to prove who stands under pressure, not who actually achieves the perfection. So my years in service saw their fair share of those inspections. 
preparation for those tests in life that started in the Army is where I learned the assembly and cleaning of a rifle along with the protocol and organization and briefing senior defense officials. What can be missed in the moment is that success is not the goal. The goal is in following direction, attention to detail, and reaching for excellence. You also learn that no individual can make it alone. You have to rely on one another, often from people you've just met and from all walks of life, to not only make it through an inspection, but to make it through combat. You have to strive for perfection one small task at a time and as a team. The Stetson motto for God and truth can not only take you to your personal best, but to discover that service leads to true success and it never requires a uniform. Great chefs begin as dishwashers and line cooks willing to do lesser tasks, knowing that the dish of a master chef will never be tasted unless it's presented on a sparkling plate from an orderly kitchen. No matter what task you take on, never diminish its value, never diminish your own value in completing it. Day by day, you gain the resilience and skill to master your own path. I have been blessed to become a student in many areas. One area like teas. Uh, I studied green, black, white, herbal, oolong through my travels in Japan and throughout Asia. And the key to a perfect cup of tea is in minding the water as it boils and steeps. So don't let anyone tell you that boiling water is a basic task. Your tea might be served to the next Japanese prime minister at a White House dinner. The rewards in my current position in the office of the Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs depend more than ever on a team approach. Every skill honed from its roots at Stetson is enhanced and sharpened by the talent and exposures of other field experts. Every day, I have to build consensus for the way forward to free our citizens by working with colleagues in the White House, across the State Department, and the Department of Defense, our intelligence communities, and with allies abroad. I can assure you, not a, one second of our day is spent working in isolation. Our successes only come by inches and through many tortured tears shed by waiting families. We celebrate every word and sign of life preserved and rejoice in every homecoming, just as one within our own families. Sadly, not every effort ends with joy, but every effort moves us closer to a world in which human lives are no longer a bargaining tool. Life is more about who we are than what we do. Choose to be a conveyor of hope to the lives around you and refuse to let anything in life discourage you of that hope. It is the engine that powers dreams into reality. And I see that power of hope at work every day in the lives of the families of Americans held in unjust captivity in foreign nations. Every American feels that hope sparked by either a single word, a message, an expression, or an official communication. Hope is still in, the, in light in these dangerous circumstances. So be that light to a struggling classmate or a family you encounter off campus or wherever your path takes you. Don't allow your desire to learn end when the semester at Stetson does. Though I have literally traveled the world as a diplomat, served in combat, and even survived an earthquake and nuclear meltdown, I'm always looking for the next adventure and the next opportunity to learn and grow. In fact, uh, just two weeks ago, I summited Mount Fuji at sunrise with my sister Jeanette. My last endeavor is to be driving my convertible 66 Mustang, and yes, it's yellow if you're wondering, uh, maybe near a beach, lapping up a local culture as I learn uh, the language, and finish working on an Oscar-winning documentary I started. Remember, this is coming from that nerd that was too shy to play the guitar when she first arrived here at Stetson. Because of what I've learned here, I have no doubt that I will make that goal a reality soon enough. There is nothing stopping each and every one of you from doing the same, whatever that dream or goal may be. It really all starts here and now with your Stetson Hatter experience. But again, don't ever let that stop. Your generation may be part of a daring endeavor beyond what any military force has ever attained. You may be part of ensuring life-giving clean water to a drought-stricken region. You may be the pioneers who put renewable energy sources at every point on the planet so that no child has to stop reading when the sun goes down. 
Whatever problem you solve, whatever dream you accomplish, it will happen because you dare to come together for a cause. Now, many of you already have a calling in life. Some of you are straining to hear even a voice of some sort of direction. Well, this place, Stetson University, and its committed gathering of professionals in every discipline of study and vocational development are dedicated to bringing distinct clarity to what God may have intended for each of your lives. The conversations, the classes, the midnight study or co coffee-fueled cram sessions are not only part of your university experience, they are all part of forging a destiny that doesn't seem possible now. So hold on for the ride and don't shut out any opportunity that, to come together. Every one of those opportunities makes a difference to who you are. You may not have someone like my mother or a large family of brothers and sisters. You may not have a strong inspirational leader like Admiral McRaven. But starting today, you have both. You here at Stetson, you have a family of hatters and you are surrounded by a faculty of leaders. It won't always be easy. You will endure frustrating, maybe tearful nights and those inevitable times when life is not fair while here at Stetson. But you will never be alone. These doors are always open to you and a circle of loving support will guide you to the light and out of hardship, a blessing of coming together. So let's get started on your journey. Re reach across a hallway to a stranger perhaps, open yourself to every new adventure, travel abroad, and never abandon the wonder that can rise from coming together with your new Hatter family. Thank you very much.